Having made these comments about the relative thickness and flexibility of the standard and pediatric insertion tubes, certain commercial colonoscopes are now available with a variable stiffness function. Using a dial on the control head, the stiffness of the insertion tube can be varied from a stiffness that approximates that of the most flexible pediatric colonoscopes to the stiffness that approaches the range of the stiffest standard insertion tubes that have been commercially available. Variable stiffness is most often employed as a method to reduce looping in the sigmoid after the sigmoid has been passed by the colonoscope tip. Thus, insertion begins with the stiffness device set on zero or the pediatric colonoscope flexibility range and the sigmoid colon is negotiated. After the colonoscope tip has been advanced beyond the sigmoid colon, the instrument is straightened and the device is activated so that the stiffening of the insertion tube may reduce the tendency of the colonoscope to form sigmoid loops. Many colonoscopists, myself included, like to have variable stiffness available and feel that in specific instances it seems to help colonoscope tip advancement. Here are some general observations about variable stiffness that may be of value to you. First, you are more likely to find the variable stiffness function valuable when using pediatric colonoscopes rather than standard insertion tubes. With standard insertion tubes, there are a greater percentage of cases where the tip can be readily advanced to the cecum without activating the stiffener just because the thicker colonoscope tends to reduce loop formation in any case. Second, there will be many instances where activation of the stiffener seems to make no difference in colonoscope tip advancement. Therefore, colonoscopists must be skilled in the other ancillary maneuvers that resist loop formation, including position change and abdominal pressure. Third, I'm convinced that there are specific instances in which activation of the stiffener actually impedes advancement of the colonoscope tip. Therefore, if you have activated it to help pass an area of difficulty, and now you encounter another area of difficulty later in the examination and the stiffener is still activated, remember to try to deactivate the stiffener and place the colonoscope in the more flexible mode again. The data on the effectiveness of variable stiffness can be summarized as follows. There is no evidence that variable stiffness improves the success rate of cecal intubation. The data on reduction in cecal intubation times is quite mixed, but there probably is some improvement in cecal intubation time, particularly for trainees and people early in their experience of colonoscopy. There is also no clear-cut evidence of improved cecal intubation rates in patients with prior failed colonoscopies. A number of studies do show a reduction in the need for ancillary maneuvers, typically on the order of 10 to 15 percent, and particularly in the need for abdominal pressure. If I could summarize the situation, I would say that lots of people like to have variable stiffness available and believe that it helps, but the hard evidence suggests that there is only a mild improvement in colonoscopy insertion associated with variable stiffness.